We're on problem seven, and they drew this graph, so I guess I'll draw it as well. That's the x-axis. That's the y-axis. Let's see, they draw off one, two, and they draw one, two, three. And then the graph goes through here and then curves up like that. And actually goes through this point right there. It goes through y is equal to 3, at least the way they drew it. On the graph before, when x equals 1 half, y is equal to 2. So they're saying that this point right here is 1 half comma 2. Fair enough. And when x is equal to 1, y is equal to 1. So they're saying that this point right here, put it in a different color just to not make it too confusing, that point right there is the point 1 comma 1. The graph is symmetrical with respect to the vertical line at x equals 2. So that means that it's a mirror image around that vertical line. According to the graph, when x is equal to 3, y should be equal to. So when x is equal to 3, we are one away from, their, from the line x is equal to 2, or what the line is a mirror image, right? So when we were 1 to the left of it, that's when x is equal to 1. And we learned y is equal to 1. So if we're 1 to the right, and this is symmetric around this line, then we're going to have the same height, right? And so if, when we're 1 to the left, the height was 1. When we're 1 to the right, the height will, should also be 1. So this should be the point 3, comma 1. So the choice is E. All that other information was kind of a waste of time. Next problem. Problem 8. When one tenth percent of five thousand, so one tenth percent, so just to get, I always like to get these into decimals. One tenth percent, that equals this divided by a hundred, so it's one over a thousand, so it's point oh oh one, so point oh oh one times five thousand is subtracted from one tenth of five thousand. The difference is okay, so they're saying, they're saying one tenth. 5,000 minus 1,000th of 5,000. Right, that's 1 tenth of a percent, is 1,000th. So you get 500 minus 5, right? And that's 495, which is choice D. Problem 9. Which of the following is the value of the square root of the cube root, the cube root of, let's see, 0 point, and how many zeros do they have? 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 4. OK, so there's how many total numbers are behind the decimal point? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's cube root. So some number times itself three times is equal to 0. 0.0064. And you know whenever you multiply decimals, you add up the number of spots behind the decimal point. If I have two numbers that have two numbers to the right of the decimal point, and I multiply them, I end up with 4. So if you just wanted to eyeball this, you say, well, first of all, what number to the third power is equal to 64? Well, 4 to the third power is equal to 64, right? It's equal to 16 times 4, which is equal to 64. So this should have a 4 someplace in it. You know, it should look like a 4. It's going to be a decimal number, because obviously the number's gotten smaller every time I, when I took the exponents of this number. And the clue is how many decimal points are there behind the, or how many places are there behind the decimal? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And I'm multiplying whatever this number is times itself three times. So in order to get six digits behind the decimal point, that original number probably has two digits behind the decimal point. So my initial kind of estimation is going to be, it's going to have a 4 in it. It's going to be 0.04. And I'm pretty sure I'm right here, because, well, you could try it out for yourself. But 0.04 times 0.04, you say, oh, 4 times 4 is 16. But I'm going to have two spaces behind, uh, I'm going to have now 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces behind the decimal point. And then if you multiply that times 0.04, 4 times 16 is 64. And now I'm going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 spaces behind the decimal point. And I get 0. 0.000064, which is exactly there. So the problem now boils down to square root of 0. 0.04.
and use the exact same logic, that is equal to 0.2. And try to square 0.2, you'll get 0.04, right? Point, 0.2 times 0.2, you say 2 times 2 is 4, and I have 1, 2 spaces behind the decimal point. So 1, 2 spaces behind the decimal point. 0.04, and that's D. Problem 10. Problem 10. Raffle tickets numbered consecutively from 101 through 350 are placed in a box. 101 through 350 are placed in a box. What is the probability that a ticket selected at random will have a number with a hundreds digit of 2? So we're essentially saying, out of this collection, how many of them have a hundreds digit of 2? So essentially, it's going to be anything from 200 to 299. Well, that's essentially 100 digits, right? That's a, that's a, those are 100 numbers that have a hundreds digit of 2. Right? Think about it. From 200, 200 by itself would be 1. From 200 to 1 would be 2. So 200 to anything would be that anything plus 1. So there's, there's 100 numbers that satisfy it. 100 numbers that satisfy it. And then how many numbers are we picking from? Well, if it was from 100 to 350, it would be two, 250 numbers. But since it's from 101 to 350, we're picking from a pool of right, 350 minus 101. We're picking from a pool of 249 numbers, right? 249 numbers. Although, let me think about that. Let me think about that. So it's a hundred digit. Right, we're picking from a pool of, I just want to make sure. If it was 101 to 2, we'd be, to 102, we'd be picking from a pool of, Right, we're picking from a pool of 249 numbers. So the odds of getting one with a two, having a number with a two in the hundreds digit will be 100 over 249. So that is choice E. I'm just making sure that I haven't made a, made a, actually, no, I'm going to take that back. Because how many digits? If I said from 300 to 350, that's 51 digits. If I say 101 to 350, that's not 249 digits. Made a mistake. That's because you're including 101, right? So it would actually be 250 digits. Sorry, it's 250 numbers. We're picking from a bag of 250 numbers. Think about it. If I if it was from 101, and these you have to make sure you get your kind of boundaries right on these. If we said from 101 to 105. How many are this? This would be 101, 102, 103, 104, and 105. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's five digits. So it's 105 minus 101 plus 1. So similarly, the bag, the, the number of digits we can pick from is going to be 350 minus 101 plus 1, which is equal to 250. So anyway, uh, out of the bag of, 200, of 250, 100 numbers satisfy it. So we're going to have a 100 and 250 chance of picking the right number. And if we divide the top and the bottom by 50, right, that's the greatest common divisor, we get 2 over 5. And that is choice A. And I got a little cautious because I saw that they had all these choices that were really close to each other. And they all seemed to test, like choices D and E, they all seemed to test whether you got the boundaries right, whether you really counted the pool correctly and whether you really counted the number of digits correctly. And I always have to go through the exercise of let me make sure whether or not I need to count 101, whether I can just subtract them or whether it's subtractions plus 1. I always have to clarify that in my own brain. Maybe that was easier for you. Question 11. Question 11. On Monday, a person mailed eight packages weighing an average of 12 and 3.8 pounds. 12 and 3.8 pounds. And on Tuesday, four packages, so this is eight, weighed that much. And on Tuesday, four packages weighing an average of 15 and 1 fourth pounds. What was the average weight in pounds of all packages the mer person mailed on both days? So you essentially have to take the sum of the weights of all of them and divide by the total, right? So what's the sum of the weights of all of them? So the sum of the weights of these eight packages, we know they're average. So the sum of the weights is going to be 8 times 12 and 3 eighths times 12 and 3 eighths. That's the sum of all of these. 
plus 4 times the weight of these, plus 4 times 15 and 1 fourth. And we're going to divide that by the total number of packages, divided by 12. So this is equal to, let's see, what's 8 times 12? 8 times 12 is 96. And what's 8 times 3 eighths? So it's 96 plus 3. right? You could view 12 and 3 eighths as 12 plus 3 eighths. So that's, I kind of just did a distributive property there. You could turn this into an improper fraction if that's easier. And then plus, what's 4 times 15? It's 60, right? And then 4 times 1 fourth is 1. All of that over 12. And so we have 99 plus 61, all of that over 12, which is equal to 160 over 12. Let's see, does 12 go into 160? 12 times 12 is 144. Well, let me think about this. So let me just divide it by top and bottom by 4. So you get 40 over 3. 40 over 3. And let's see, all of the answers, they have it in terms of fractions. So 3 goes into 40 how many times? It goes into 13, right? 13 times 3 is 39. So it's 13 with remainder 1. So 13 and 1 third times. So A is the answer. So the average of all of the packages on both days are 13 and 1 third pounds.